You know, I just want to throw this out there that I think AEW should consider changing their name. I really do. They should change themselves to the YLW. What's that stand for, you ask? Of course, Young Lions Wrestling. Because if you are a young lion in professional wrestling today, you don't want to go up north to the big evil Titan Tower Endeavor WWE machine. No, 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 no. You want to go down to Jacksonville. You want to go down to AEW as it's called now. You want to go down to Young Lion Wrestling because that is the place. That is the Serengeti where the Young Lions can roar and practice their craft. Now I knew, even though that Russell Dream card last night did not strike me at all and did not incentivize me in any way to want to buy the pay-per-view, therefore I didn't, I knew there was going to be a small part of me that was perhaps going to regret it, kind of, because everything was pointing to and indicating that this young lion named Adam Copeland, that many of you may know as Edge, was going to make his AEW debut because, again, AEW equals young lion wrestling. And he did. And thankfully, due to the joys of the internet, I got to see him make his appearance and I didn't have to fork over 50 bucks for it. Because I just saw the two-minute clip or whatever, and I'm like, hey, I'm good. The young lion of young lions is here. And what a moment, right? Here is this guy that you have so closely associated with the WWE for decades. Not for a couple of years, but for decades. This is going back to Attitude Era type of stuff. And here he is, a guy that had to retire for several years due to a neck injury, you know, just as that young lion was starting to unleash his full potential. A former member of the Fortunate Four of WWE, along with Batista, Cena, and Orton. And now we're in 2023, and this young man of all of age, 49, is coming into the fold, and he's coming to AEW, and he's going to be full-time, baby! Yeah! This is great! This is fantastic! He's got his best years ahead of him! Now, what I don't get is those people that are expressing disappointment or sorrow or rage or anything like that about him leaving WWE and going down to AEW. Why? This is part of the reason why you want to have two major American, two major North American wrestling companies. Because, yeah, it was great a few years back when Edge came back as a surprise entrant to the Royal Rumble, and you're like, holy shit, it's Edge. Holy shit, he's actually going to wrestle. Holy shit, he's actually going to work some type of regular schedule. But you kind of got to the point here where, you know, everything runs in cycles, right? And for WWE, you kind of got to the point of there was only but so much they could do with Edge. There was only so much that they had for him. There was only going to be so much that was going to be worthy of him. There was only going to be so much that made sense. So instead of sticking this young lion around there and just jobbing him out and diminishing the value of Edge, let him go. Let him go. And now he comes to an AEW, Young Lion Wrestling, and it could be a full fresh packaging and... He could try to do different things. He could work different programs and feuds because part of the challenge for a guy like Adam Copeland in WWE is that he's always going to be Edge. And no matter what iteration or spin you put on that, it's ultimately always going to be Edge. So to the people that are sitting there and mad about it or disappointed about it, I mean, what the fuck do you expect the guy to do? Certainly, you know Tony Khan was going to back up the Brinks truck this young lion is going to turn 50 in October. Like, yeah, sure, he's got, you know, another 10, 15 years in his career. That's my estimation. But if somebody is going to pay you more money to work potentially less dates and allow you more creative freedom and allow you more control over what you do on your character, why in the fuck would you not do that? Like, I don't begrudge WWE for letting him go because I get it. I don't begrudge Adam Copeland for going to AEW because, again, I get it. 
I guess part of the purpose of having this two company system, right? A Jade Cargill has a run. And then you get to the point you say, okay, go somewhere else. Get a different presentation. Get a different set of people to work with. This shit is actually fucking good in my opinion. That way the talent doesn't get stagnant and stale. You get a chance to go somewhere else and kind of reinvent yourself, reimagine yourself, freshen yourself up. So anybody that doesn't like this, fuck you. Like, this is great. And as far as Adam Copeland and AEW, like, think about all the young lions that he could work with. I mean, obviously, Christian. You've got Chris Jericho. You know, you throw him and Darby Allen and Sting together and they could go after the acclaimed. And Billy Gunn. Oh, no. Could you imagine Edge versus Sting in an AEW ring? Oh, sweet. But beyond that, like think about all of the different talents that he could work with. Certainly at some point, you've got to go with Adam Copeland versus MJF. Like to not do that would be just sheer criminal stupidity from Tony Khan. You know, you could argue that Adam Copeland and Brian Danielson have some old business to tend to from another place. When Brian Danielson politicked his way into a fucking WrestleMania main event, t stealing some of Adam Copeland's spotlight. Fuck yeah, sign me up for that shit. Like there are so many talents. Like he could work a program with Ricky Starks. I could go on and on and on. Like just in terms of the different names and the different faces that he could either work with that he's never really worked with before or that he's worked with before but you could do in a different way. You've got two to four years right there of work for this guy. Meanwhile, Adam Copeland Edge is arguably the biggest signing that AEW's ever had. Like if you were thinking about biggest signings in AEW history, on that Mount Rushmore is probably, much as you don't like to say it, CM Punk, Chris Jericho. Yeah, yeah he, he absolutely was, right? Like, let's not diminish him too much. Like, getting a guy like Jericho to come there and be a foundational piece for the company was a big deal at the time, right? So getting him, Punk. But honestly, like, I'd argue Adam Copeland feels just as big, if not bigger, than those two. He might be the biggest. And this is a company, AEW, that, you know, part of the deal is they kind of live off of that surprise and that, that big thing and they need that injection of new young talent such as this 49-year-old Adam Copeland every once in a while and by God, we're going to enjoy it! Now, do I have some trepidation, trepidation about how he's going to be featured and what he's going to do here? Sure, I do. But at the moment, like Young Lion Wrestling just got the best, hottest Young Lion available on the market, damn it! And I'm going to give him props and salute him for it. Six months from now, I might be bitching about it, but not today, folks. Not today. Let this Young Lion roar!